What is going on ladies and gentle beans of the tribe and welcome back to another Galaxy of Heroes video with me, your bald headed boy Scribble. It's Monday morning and that can only mean one thing. We're about to get galactically challenged. Today we find ourselves on the Death Star facing off against the Inquisitorius, thankfully without Reva. However, this is still a horrendous galactic challenge. The global modifier actually is the one thing that works in our favour. It is that volatile energies modifier. Essentially, every single time somebody takes a turn, we gain 5% charge on this one super blast laser laser blast super blast essentially it's an insta kill but obviously 20 turns need to be taken before you can actually use it so you have to try and get it to time out so that it's your turn so you can destroy the enemy and they can't just instantly one tap you there are benefits unfortunately for Ewoks. It's Ewoks against Inquisitors. It's just a terrible combination. We gain a bunch of counterattack and a lot of additional speed, but the problem is us counterattacking any of the Inquisitorious means that we're going to gain a stack of Purge, and if we get six stacks of Purge on any of our Ewoks for the first time, the Grand Inquisitor is going to take a bonus turn and basically destroy our entire lineage. The Ewok village will burn to the ground. Imperial Edict is the enemy modifier, and that just means they've got a bunch of extra health and protection. Whenever they use a special ability on their leader, everybody's going to assist, and it's just going to absolutely melt our faces. The feats are we need to win with a full team of Ewoks, we also need to complete the battle after gaining stealth 10 times, and we need to complete the battle without losing a unit. Now, this is possible with Ewoks. That's all I'll say about that. It is possible with Ewoks. As you can see, I have red boxed, but it's not fun. It's not fun. You will need Relic Ewoks and you will need to remod most likely. Now, this is the team that I got it to work with. A Tebow lead. We're using Princess Nisa, Paplu, Logray, and Ewok Elder. We kind of need Ewok Elder there to, you know, help us survive and revive because we are going to lose units throughout this. You need a whole lot of luck and a whole lot of chutzpah. Essentially, I'm using our good boy Tebow here because he has got good TM control. Essentially, we can stealth our units, which will stop the enemies from attacking out of turn so frequently. I know that can stun them, but really we want to control the amount of damage that they're outputting. But not only that, we also have a chance to gain turn meter at the end of our turns. Tebow is also incredibly useful because if he is stealthed and uses his basic, he can remove 100% turn meter and also the bring low ability over here can dispel buffs. And if we do dispel buffs with it, he is also going to strip off 60% turn meter. His first special can also pass 100% turn meter to all Ewok allies, which is absolutely fantastic, okay? This is where we really want to be going. So I've modded this guy for essentially a bit of health and a lot of potency. He still has 298 speed. Don't forget, we're gaining a big healthy chunk boost of speed from the modifier. And really, you just want potency. So if ever he gets that chance to remove turn meter, he actually lands it because we need to control the enemy team. At least that's how I feel like. Now, Nisa is mostly there because she is a big old stat bump. I do not have her Zeta on Yubnub, which would probably be quite useful. Um, but she's mostly there because her Bright Tree Village ability is giving us quite a lot of additional survivability. Oli Wakala is gaining 15% defense, 20% max health, and extra potency. All of this is really, really useful. She's also a really good damage stick, and she's great once you've gotten rid of Grand Inquisitor as well. Now, Paplu over here is just about survivability. I just went full defense sets. I got him rather fast, and then just put all protection primaries on him, I believe. Protection and protection and protection and speed on the arrow. He's going to gain a bunch of speed when he's not taunting at the start over here. He gains 25% speed if he's not taunting, so it does make him go rather quick, and that's great because it means you can get that taunt up very, very quickly. He also has Galvanize, which can call an ally to assist, but more importantly, he is going to dispel debuffs on them, which is really useful, and they gain some extra turn meter, and turn meter is our friend. Log Ray is super important. I've gone for speed set and potency set. So over here, we've got 324 speed and 121% potency. And that's because this Hypnotize is very, very useful. That is going to daze the enemy team so they don't gain turn meter, but also it's going to strip back turn meter when we use it. 
Very, very useful. And then we've got some additional turn meter generation and foresight and advantage and all this sort of good business. Very, very useful. Ewok Elder is there to revive our allies. Still got 298 speed, lots and lots of health. That's all I care about for him because he's got one, an AoE cleanse with a heal, which has a potential to revive, but also his second special will guarantee re revive one random Ewok ally. So that does save me. I'm going to show the footage and I'm going to give my guidance on how we do this, but it is nasty, ladies and gentlemen, okay? And away we go. So we should be going first here, and the first thing that I like to do is to, one, we don't want to call any assists against the Inquisitors because that's going to put Purge on us. I'm going to call in Nisa here to try and get some extra turn meter on her with that pass to assist, and we immediately want to try and control Seventh Sister with that daze. Hopefully you land the TMR, but I didn't there. Then you try and stun GI, which didn't happen for me, and you gotta hope you survive this opener you just have to hope you survive the opener guys after that whole enemy team here is getting stunned thanks to all those attacks out of turn that they did from grand inquisitor special that's very useful and now we just want to play that survival game unfortunately we're only going to remove turn meter if um, tebow is stealthed on that basic and we weren't able to get round to his turn at the start unfortunately so me you were a little bit Nisa's first special is going to cleanse off all debuffs, and you do want to do that. Want to make sure that we can get rid of all those stacks of purge. You never want to hit six stacks of purge on any one character, because that is going to cause Grand Inquisitor to take a bonus turn. So we're just going around, we're using specials, we're cleansing. I'm focusing on the Snowtrooper operative, so that we do not, under any circumstances, gain too many stacks of purge on Nisa. Now, as you can see, we did lose Paplu there, and it actually turns out to be okay. So we're just going around here using our specials 85% or 90% now on the event special ability. Gain that, using that first special on Tebow to gain the additional turn meter on the whole team is so clutch. So we are able to revive Paplu and then we have the event special ability. You have to kill Grand Inquisitor with it. Get rid of him and the game becomes so much easier. I would then focus on getting rid of Seventh Sister because she's going to keep the team alive. Nisa is going to be putting in all the work. Whenever we use a special, she is going to assist. From here, you want to control the team. Controlling Fifth Brother is useful because he has got a rather lethal AoE. We lose our Paplu once again there. Nothing we can really do about that. Now, at this point, very important, I use the cleanse here with Nisa to get rid of that burning that's existing on Logray. If I didn't do this, when Logray takes a turn, he's going to die. So we get rid of that burning on, uh, on Logray just to keep him alive right now. And this basic, this... Because T uh, Tebow is stealth, he's going to remove turn meter. Unfortunately, she did resist it, so, but we tried our best. This is why it's important to have loads and loads of potency. All right, okay, so we might get lucky here with a revive, uh, but we don't, unfortunately. Just focusing on one sister at a time, I'm trying to build back up to another um, event special ability here to get rid of Fifth Brother. He is the next most important character to get rid of, and hopefully we can just strip turn meter away from people. Do it obviously on the people that are not stealthed or uh, not stunned already, and that should help. More control there on Eighth Brother, trying to make sure that they don't take turns. This is very sketchy, and you'll have to get very lucky, guys. I'm not going to pretend like this is not an RNG mess. Event special ability, I get rid of Fifth Brother, and I'm going to leave Eighth Brother until last, I think. Oh no, actually, I think I swapped targets. Apologies. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to cleanse off because we want to try and get back around to that heal. We need one more turn on Ewok Elder to get the revive off, thankfully. Nearly lost Tebow there. Thank goodness we didn't. Thank goodness we didn't lose Tebow there because that would have uh, messed us up here. And there we go. We've got our Paplu back and it's just a case of let's see if we can... Um, if we can clear out now without the enemy taking another turn. Thankfully, we do manage to get that done. Paplu over there just coming in, dispelling the buffs on 8th Brother, and we just need to deal enough damage here with Nisa to make sure that 8th Brother doesn't do anything. First special again from Tebow there to grant 100% turn meter to the team, heal up the team, and things are looking pretty good. And that's kind of it, guys. Now, I'm not going to pretend like this was easy or it was, you know... Uh, nothing more than some really favorable RNG, but I'm just trying to show you the way that I was managing to do this without having to worry too much about uh, missing out on that red box. So yeah, it is possible, it is possible. But if you are a more sane individual and all you care about is getting the second best box, we can do that with a little bit of deliberation. 
So if you're looking for wins with no losses, as well as gaining stealth, I recommend a Zeta Darth Maul leadership. Essentially, the Dancing Shadows leadership is going to provide stealth to all of your Sith allies at the start, as well as a bit of extra turn meter. And then whenever we get crit, we are also going to gain that rather wonderful stealth. So we've already got five stealths right out the gate. We just want to get that fear out and try and control people as much as possible. Now, I'm not going to use this uh, life drain just yet because I want to keep all of these guys within stealth for the time being. So I'm just going to basic over here on the Shadow Trooper operative. Next up, what do I want to do? I think I'll probably put Isolate on 8th Brother so they can't stealth. And I'm going to reduce the cooldowns on, yeah, let's do it on Nihilus for now. Quite happily do a bit of an AoE here to get the days out. There's a big AoE, so we've hit all of the stealths that we need to now, guys. Stealths have been achieved, thankfully. We do not need to do any more of that. So I'm going to put, go ahead and put Tenacity down on the Grand Inquisitor, and then I'm going to suck everybody dry. Good old Nihilus. Let's see if we can get some ability blocks over here on the Grand Inquisitor. No such luck yet. Um, okay, I'm a little bit concerned. A little bit concerned, so I need to stun this individual to try and hopefully take another turn before they get an insta-kill on me. Okay, good, they didn't use it. That's rather fortunate. We can then get rid of Grand Inquisitor with our event special ability. Isn't that wonderful? And then we just want to focus on killing units one at a time now. Control is obviously very, very vital here. We want to try and control the enemy as much as possible so that they can't get anything done. Who shall I get rid of here? I think I'll get rid of Fifth Brother first and foremost. So, boom, annihilate you. And Malak should hopefully have a little bit of a life drain. We're going to focus on Seventh Sister next. Fully heal ourselves. Get rid of her as soon as possible, hopefully. Come yeah, on. Oh, really? We could have gotten rid of her there. Uh... Yeah, let's go ahead and fear. Wonderful. And I think I'll just basic on uh, second sister right now. She's looking a little bit on the peaky side. Let's go ahead and basic there. Absolutely get some AOE shocks out. Wonderful. Let's go ahead and... Ooh. Let's see, am I going to take another turn? I am. So I'm going to life drain the Shadow Trooper operative. And then I'm just going to use event special ability there. And then life drain over here on second sister. And I'm going to try and keep Nihilus alive. That's the main thing. Keep Nihilus alive. Get that um, tenacity down. Apologies from Malak there. Let's also gain the days and hopefully land some ability blocks. Yeah, come on then. Wow, she's really focusing on that Nihilus, isn't she? Really focusing on the Nihilus right now. Fear. And then decrease cooldowns of our Annihilate. Yeah, come on then. Let's be having you. And we should have event special ability. There we go. It's a little bit sketchy. A little bit sketchy, but it certainly can be done. That will give you all the stealths and it will give you victory with no losses. If you want an easier way of getting the stealths with also not losing any units, I'd recommend Jedi Master Kenobi with Commander Ahsoka Tano and the Bad Batch. This should be relatively straightforward. We can actually just reset the cooldowns on Cat at the start. And she's just going to go ahead and yeet out Grand Inquisitor, Grand Inquisitor to make our lives a lot easier. After that, all we have to do is use our Bad Batch over here to gain as much stealth as possible. So, once we get round to Echo's turn, in uh, sorry, Tech's turn in just a moment. If the Inquisitors could kindly stop taking infinite turns, that would be fantastic. So we just roll out this bomb and boom, we've gained ourselves three stealths. This first special over here from our good boy Hunter as well is going to stealth additional allies. Clone Trooper allies gain evasion up and stealth for two turns. So boom, boom, boom. There we go. That's now six stealths. We can pass the turn back and forth then with... Um, with uh, Jedi Master Kenobi, and essentially what we're looking to do now is get to a point where we can reset cooldowns on our allies. Don't forget, Echo over here also has a means of stealthing as well, which is kind of good. So let's go ahead and just call in over here. Wonderful. And we're just going to try and time this out now to get more stealths, more stealths, more stealths, lots and lots of stealths. We can use the event special ability. This is mainly to make sure that the enemy can't get it. You don't want them ac accidentally killing one of your units. And I'm going to pass back and forth over here with our good boy, Tech, to try and get some additional stealths across the board. Wonderful. Don't forget, when he's at three stacks of translation and we use a basic attack, he is going to be reducing cooldowns. So let's go ahead and just call in our boy, Tech, here. That's going to reduce some cooldowns. Isn't that wonderful? Ooh, we nearly lost Cat there. That was kind of scary. Uh, let's actually just keep Cat alive, because that's the main focus here, is making sure everybody stays alive. Don't forget, first special. First special from Hunter. Three stealths. Second special over here. 
gains more stealths. Actually, that, not that one. This second special over here from Tech gains us our stealth. There we go. And that's definitely all of our stealth stun. Isn't that wonderful? So I'm going to go ahead and pass background to uh, JMK over here. Just to try and finish off this battle. Ah, uh, yeah, why not? We'll just finish it up. We'll just finish it up. So if you've got a GR, uh, a, a JMK Galactic Legend, you can get the stealth there relatively easily with the Bad Batch. Really not so much of an issue there. Another option is, of course, to be using the Phoenix with Captain Rex over here. So we're taking in Hera with Captain Rex, obviously, Chopper, Kanan, and Sabine. These guys can do a very, very good job against Inquisitors just in general through the nature of how our kits are going to be working. We're going to be generating quite a lot of turn meter with all the purges that are going on here. So we can just keep on using our AoEs here whenever we're gaining purges after attacking out of turn. We're just going to be gaining a whole bunch of turn meter. So we can just keep on going and keep on going and keep on going. This would be an easy way necessarily of um, making sure that we don't lose a unit. Not so useful for the stealths, obviously, because we don't really have a source of stealth for this team. But essentially, it's just a case of spamming specials here, and you'll easily get the victory against the Inquisitors if you happen to have pretty solid Phoenix here. Most important is that you've got Captain Rex. He's really the engine of this team. As you can see, they don't really get to take turns. It's pretty much straightforward victory here for you guys. Now, if you're doing this and you're still worried about trying to get at least some of the Ewok victories, you can just take your Ewoks at Tier 6, and still get at least some good box winnings there and get your Omicrons at the very least. So yeah, Phoenix are a pretty hard counter just in general to Inquisitors. Um, use them if you do have it and you just want an easy time of gaining victory at tier 10. So again, you could just go in at tier 6 then if you're just using standard Ewoks and we'll take the same approach. I do recommend going in with the Tebow lead still. We'll take in, uh, not Chief Chirper, we'll take in the standard Paplu. Uh, Logray and Ewok Elder so that you can have some form of revive but the approach here is the same as we used earlier we just want to make sure that the enemy isn't able to um, essentially take too many turns or or get that um, uh, get six decks of purge out on our units so we probably actually just have straight up enough damage over here to um, to clear out the enemy before that really happens but let's make sure we just cleanse off those purges. I'm going to just, just focus on Grand Inquisitor for now, just see how that does. Mm, it's probably a little bit too risky at the moment. Let's go ahead and... Okay, so 36. It would be great if we had stealth. Okay, Grand Inquisitor is going to take a turn in a second, but thankfully he was stunned. Let's go ahead and... Yes, yeah, just basic here. We should be able to get rid of Grand Inquisitor. There we go. That's really not so bad. Get the taunt up. And just a basic over here. Ooh, we should be able to strip turn meter with a basic. There we go. We do like Tebow. We do like Tebow very, very much. Just going to basic over here on fifth brother. And let's see if we can strip back the turn meter on second sister. Unfortunately, she resisted. How dare she? Even with all that potency we've got going. Even with all that potency. All right, let's uh, get rid of the debuffs right about now. We should be okay. All right, so let's see. We've got buffs here. We, I mean, we're probably just going to defeat you. Absolutely fantastic. So pretty easy on this tier of difficulty because the enemy just doesn't have all that damage, all that speed, all that survivability. So yeah, I recommend just going in at tier 6. Don't waste your time trying to do the tier 10 unless you have really good modding and good investment in your Ewoks, ladies and gentlemen. But that's going to about do it for a really horrendous Monday Galactic Challenge. Let me know in the comments section down below what did you use. And I will see you all in the very next video. Peace out and may the force be with you.